Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Amorphous, Halo, out February 11th on Atomic Fire. This album has 11 tracks, 56 minutes in length, and this is the band's 14 full length studio album. They are a Finnish heavy metal band. Now for this record I felt like they took some elements of Queen of Time as far as the album construction is concerned and they migrated them over. This is not to say that the two albums are similar because they're not. But as far as the movement goes, that's something that I saw in Queen of Time and I see it on this record as making the experience for the listener as fluid as possible. Outside of that, this is a much different album. As far as the structure and design is concerned, I felt like this is a more balanced record. It comes together better as one. It's not an album that uses some cornerstone singles in order to bring the whole record together. It rather lives off of the quality of all 11 songs and the quality that those songs then give to the collective. This is really a full length album in its essence. And it also has a sense of growth. The lessons that you learn, what you absorb from the first song, you're gonna take that into the second song and then they add something different, they add something new, you're gonna take that into the third song and so forth and so forth. So this is an album that the listener will lose himself in it and the deeper you go, the more you learn. So you're not only losing yourself within the record, you're also gaining knowledge with the experience of navigating through it. So when you reach the end of the album, you really feel like there was a lesson that was learned and you took all the little pieces of smaller lessons from each and every single song in order to paint that big picture and understand exactly the globality of this record. Once you move into the soundscape, this is amorphous, so you're gonna expect and you're gonna get incredible soundscape, incredible atmosphere. This album is very diverse and what drives it. They bring in elements from folk, from melodic death metal, progressive elements, exactly what you would come to expect from Amorphous in an album like this. It allows the soundscape to be rich, it allows it to have depth, it allows it to be big, to have life, to have energy, and to move really well. The beauty of the sound on this album is that it's really easy to digest. You could tell that it's not an easy record as far as what it offers. It has layers and it has a lot of them. But the experience for the listener is one that doesn't really require you to dive deep. If you wanna dive deep into it, you can but you can still experience the record, you can still take all the pleasure away from, from listening to this album just by navigating it through, just at the surface. The album comes across that way, it feels very simple, it feels very easy, taking you from song to song in the, in the best way possible so that you stay connected with the record and you don't really feel like there's a chance or an opportunity to walk away from it. The soundscape on this album is phenomenal from that perspective, giving you two different looks depending on how much you wanna get into it or how much you just wanna enjoy the experience. Now within the overall sound, we have to talk about the keyboards, drums, bass, guitars, and vocals. This is amorphous. They don't live off of one element, they live off of how all of these elements coming together impact the sound and impact the experience. I love the keys on this album. They weave throughout the sound and they don't demand attention from the listener. They're there, but they're part of a much larger picture and they're better connected with what's happening within the tracks. They almost dissipate, they almost disappear or become just a haze that becomes part of the overall sound that you're experiencing, becomes part of the atmosphere, but they're not necessarily in your face constantly telling you or demanding your attention very important element if you're gonna have an album that has this sense of movement that this one has. As far as drums and bass, I like the consistency that they offer the record. If there is a red line that connects all 11 songs, I think you have to look at the drums and bass and how they cooperate with one another. Not just in terms of grounding the record, but at least creating some sort of shape. This is not an album that really has a sense of borders as far as each song goes, because as you move into the tracks and as the tracks expand, those borders start to become less and less noticeable. You know the starting point and you know the shape of the song at the starting point, but you can't really see the finish line. But the drums and bass really help create at least that starting point and really create a little bit of, of a larger footprint for these tracks and overall record to exist. Now the guitars are super dynamic. I mean, if there's a heartbeat, if there's a soul, if there's an energy that drives the experience, it's definitely in the guitars. Very dynamic, very diverse. Uh, allowing themselves to, to give you different feels and different looks and having a positive impact, not just how the songs sound, but the atmosphere that they create. A lot of that atmosphere comes from what the guitars are doing, the melody that they put forward. The solos on this album are outstanding, always adding value to the songs and then obviously having a positive impact in the overall record. I just love the guitar sound. I love the guitar playing. It's mesmerizing. You lose yourself in it. It becomes such an integral part of how you feel towards these songs and then obviously how you feel towards the record. 
On top of all of this, you have Tommy on vocals. And what is there to say? Tommy is Tommy, just like Amorphous is Amorphous. He's incredible. His clean vocals are outstanding. I've always been a fan of, of his style, his approach, clean, harsh vocals. But on this album, his clean vocals felt a little bit more organic. They felt a little bit more attached, emotionally attached to the process. And that comes across in his delivery, it comes across in his tone, and it definitely has a positive impact on how you're gonna perceive these songs. The harsh vocals create the perfect blend because they break those routines, they break a little bit away from the melody of this record because overall, musically, this is not a very heavy album. There are some heavy moments throughout the record, but it's overall not a heavy record. But the vocals do the job of adding heaviness into songs that perhaps otherwise would feel super thin and super light. So I really like that approach from Tommy. I really like the style and I really like the choices that he makes in terms of going with one style versus the other. Also using some choirs throughout the entire record added a different layer, it added a different vibe. But for an album that doesn't have cornerstone tracks, doesn't have singles that really connect this album, an album that lives off of the quality of the, of the global picture that the record offers, having that sort of global vocal approach works really well. It helps bring it all together. It makes the album feel more as one, not just on a musical side because that was already happening, but vocally it brings everything to the table. Overall, this album is phenomenal. An album that doesn't have the, the, the singles that drive the experience. I think this is really a record. It really feels as one is the collection of all these tracks, the energy that they give you, the lessons that you learn, the experience that you take from song to song, and how all of them come together at the end. Perhaps if you look at Queen of Time, it was an album that was easier to digest on an individual song basis. This record, I really feel like it almost forces the listener to sit down from beginning to end in order for you to get the full essence of it. You can still enjoy the individual tracks, but it's really an album meant to be listened from start all the way to finish. Now, as far as favorite songs are concerned, I want to start off with Northwards. This is the opening track on the album. The keys open up and then the melody that the keys had moves in into the guitars and the whole sound becomes bigger. Uh, it, it opens up the book, if you will. It's a very methodic song, methodic and heavy, and normally those two tend to go together and on this song you're gonna feel it both musically and vocally. It moves a little bit better as it gets closer to the chorus. The chorus brings some clean vocals and the clean vocals help create a transition and allows it to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more dynamic. It's a song that has a little bit more life. You're gonna get a proggy bridge on this track towards the end of the track that's really interesting because it breaks the mold. It changes the song completely. It takes the song in a much different direction. It goes deeper as far as the emotional drive that it carries and then it moves into the solos. First a guitar solo and then a keyboard solo. It gives almost a 70s vibe. It goes almost psychedelic at times once you move into that from that bridge into the solos, changing the dynamic, changing your perception of the track, then using a choir to build back from that deep hole that it created musically and emotionally, back up again into the chorus, having a little bit more of an experience, having a little bit more of a bigger sound. What a track, what a roller coaster ride built in within one single song. I love the track musically, vocally, and obviously the construction is phenomenal. Next we have War, one of the hookiest, catchiest songs on the entire record. It has more of a folky opening to it, and then the sound becomes a little bit heavy, still with that folky influence present there, but more as a layer. It carries itself really well forward. It has some heavy vocals that help pack a punch, and it also help condensate and make the sound feel a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger. The chorus strips it down, and the chorus feels more melodic, both musically and vocally. The clean vocals in the chorus are absolutely Haunting is a mesmerizing track from a vocal perspective and it's a song that has a lot of movement musically making it super interesting. But the chorus, it's hooky, it's catchy, the one lines just make this song feel like an earworm from beginning to end. Definitely one of those that stands out in the crowd. Last but not least, really last because this is the last song on the album, My Name Is Night featuring Petronella Nedermalm. Uh, it's a duet, an incredible duet, a song that you can't really place anywhere else on the record. Because if you're gonna build an album that has a sense of progression, that has a sense of learning, and you adding elements to your experience, you need a song like this at the end that strips it all back down. It makes you wonder about everything that you experienced up to that point. So this song could not be anywhere else. It has to be at the end of the record. This incredible stripped down duet with two incredible vocalists using just clean vocals uh, really drives 
the nail home, if you will. I mean, this is an absolute amazing track. I love the emotion that it has, the emotion that it has in the sound, the emotion that it has in the vocals, the stripped down effect that it has, how the keyboards play a predominant role on this track, and they need to because of that stripped down effect. Magnificent duet, like I said, a song that sounds nothing like anything you've experienced up until that point in terms of the music, in terms of the emotion, and obviously in terms of the vocals, it's a duet. Incredible track all around, what a way to put an exclamation mark at the end of this album. This is Amorphous with Halo, out February 11th on Atomic Fire. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below, I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care guys.